out into the outdoors, a topo map is a useful resource. It provides a three-dimensional view of an area on two-dimensional paper. They can be used to plan trips and navigate and save you from unexpected surprises. The concepts I will discuss here are valid around the world. Here in New Zealand, people generally use Land Information New Zealand topo maps, which can be purchased on paper or viewed online at topomap.co.nz. In this video, I'm going to cover the parts of a topo map, scale and distances, contours, and how to use a legend to identify landmarks. Most topo maps have two main parts, the map and the margin. The left margin shows the legend and information on the map's area and date. The main feature of the bottom margin is the scale and contour information, which I will cover in this video. To the left of this is the magnetic declination information used for map and compass navigation. To the right is the grid reference information. If you're interested in learning how to navigate with a map and compass, or how to take a grid reference, I will be making videos on these topics soon. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss these. The most common map scales in New Zealand are 1 to 50,000 and 1 to 250,000. The one I have here has a 1 to 50,000 scale. This means that 1 cm on the map equals 50,000 cm, which is equal to 500 metres. Each grid square is 2 cm wide, so each square represents 1 km in distance. So to find a distance between two points, simply measure between the points and compare it to the given scale. If the area to be navigated is not in the straight line, a piece of string can be used and placed against the scale. The contour lines on a topo map allow you to visualise the area in three dimensions. Each line links points of equal elevation. Every fifth contour line is a darker index contour, which gives the elevation above sea level. On this topo map, the interval between contour lines is 20 metres. This means there is a 100 metre elevation change between index contours. When the contour lines are closer together, the terrain is steeper. Peaks can be easily identified as the contour lines form a circle. The smaller the circle, the sharper the peak. Elevations in the index contours are read in an uphill direction. As you can see in this example, the 500 is facing towards the peak. Ridges are long, thin crests that join high points. An example can be seen here. The sides of the ridge drop down to lower elevations. A valley lies between hills or mountains, typically with a river or stream flowing through it. The contours form a V or a U when they cross the stream. These point in an upstream direction so the water is flowing downhill in the opposite direction. A spur is a lateral ridge which descends from a hill, mountain or ridge to an area of lower land such as a valley. A spur can be identified on a map by the contours forming a V or U shape pointing in the downhill direction, usually between two streams. A saddle is a low point between two high points. It's sometimes marked by this symbol. It can also be identified by the U-shaped contour lines opposite each other with the saddle in between. Finally, the legend shows all the other main features on the map, such as tracks, lakes and waterfalls. I hope you enjoyed the video. If it was helpful, please like and subscribe. I'll be posting videos on taking grid references and compass navigation soon. Of course you can catch my other videos of outdoor adventures in preparation for Te Araroa this summer. If you would like to support my adventure, there's a link to donate in the description below this video. Every cent helps. If you have any questions about reading a topo map, or any ideas for future videos you would like to see, please leave them in the comments below. See you next time.